are massive. On this episode, yeah. Alison's life and death battle to save a baby camel. It doesn't look very good, Margie. And the baby's critically ill mother. <laughs> Definitely out of my comfort zone. Looks like she's got some pretty nasty injuries. Luna has been hit by a car. Oh, wow. Alex is shocked at the brave little dog's injuries. I'm really worried about you, sweetheart. Poor girl. Hey, Rosie. And Tim's koalas need urgent tests. Are we going to test everyone for cough? Everyone. But they're not cooperating. That wasn't. No, come on. Almost. You make my world a better place. Come on, there's your girl. Hey Patrice, can you give me a hand with this girl? On the Gold Coast, Alex is about to examine one-year-old puppy Luna, who's been rushed into emergency after being hit by a car. She's definitely in a degree of shock. I've given her some pain relief, but let's get her on some oxygen. Poor girl. And I just want to check out her wounds because she looks like she's got some pretty nasty injuries. Owners Hope and Liam are devastated at what's happened to their precious girl. We accidentally left the side door open and um, I heard a car, I heard the car and I just felt like something was wrong and ran around looking for Luna and couldn't find her so I went out the front and um, then she was just hobbling over to me. But her front paw was all floppy, pretty devastating. All right, let's see what's going on. I'm just going to go nice and slowly. I'm just going to start back. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. It doesn't look very good back here. Oh, darling. Yeah. I can see underneath here. She's got wounds. She's been dragged. Oh, yeah, and on her belly too. Oh, she looks like she's got grazing all along her tummy. That would be okay. so painful. Of course, we don't even know what her internal injuries are. With hit by car patients, you become extremely concerned about injuries like internal bleeding and head trauma. But I can already see she's got significant external injuries. Oh, look at this, she's even got little wounds oh. on her head. She's literally must have just tumbled along the ground. I'm going to touch anyone that hurts too much. Mm, I'd be pretty worried with the amount of her injuries. Girl. I'm just going to have a listen to her chest. It's such a sweet Okay. Just sounds okay. I know, I know. Yeah, I think we're definitely going to have to do some x rays. Okay. See how bad the damage is, but she's only a little dog, and if the car hit her at the speed. Maybe some damage back there. Yeah. Or shall I get her set up and. Yeah, if you can pop her in a bed. Yeah. Okay, um, I'll come back and see you, all right, sweetheart. I'm going to fix you up. Today, Alison is heading outside Brisbane to a camel farm and one of the biggest challenges she's ever faced. I've just received an SOS from Margie. She's asked me to come urgently to the camel farm. I'm excited to be there again, but a little bit worried. What are we dealing with? Let's and do let's it. do this. Alison has had limited experience with camels, so helping vet Margie is going to be a massive learning curve. Margie, it's massive. Humongous. How are we going to get it back in? It's not great. When I arrived, Janet's lying on her side and her entire uterus is actually outside her body on the ground. So it's extremely shocking to see this. Not only is she in pain, she's very weak at this point. Is it still going to be viable? If we can't get this uterus back inside, Janet will die. So what we've got to do is I've got to tie some ropes. Hey girls. As other farm staff arrive to help, Alison and Margie must find a way to reinsert the new mum's prolapsed uterus before it's too late. We'll tie the front legs because we can't get her to stand up because it'll cause too much trauma if she stands on that oh. uterus. Poor Janet is in such a bad state at the moment. It's the entire 
bag that the baby has come in has now come outside her body. It's a true life and death emergency. We have to just improvise and make the best of this bad situation. Close by, Janet's newborn daughter is also struggling to survive without her mum. So what we've got to do is make a little makeshift operating theatre. Oh, poor thing. Hello, sister girl. Hey. No, Bubba. Bubba. Oh. Bubba. Janet chill, is in chill. a huge amount of distress. She's lost a lot of fluid in the birthing process. She's also going into shock and a lot of her body systems have shut down. Chill, 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 chill. In the UK, at Scott's Isleworth practice, Hi Stacey, how are you? I'm alright, how Hi, are you? Hi I'm good. Stacey has arrived with her 18-month-old Jack Russell Cross, Reggie. Hello nervous boy. Wow, he's really limping on that leg at the moment, isn't he? Yeah. Come on, Come Reg. Come on then, big fella. Come on then. Good boy, that's it. He's such a lovely dog. Very friendly. I absolutely love that dog. I love that dog to bits. Do you know what, it's so weird, he just jumped, ran off into the kitchen, leg up, wouldn't let us touch him, and then all this aggravation. Well, let's have a little look at the leg itself, shall we? If you just hold him around the shoulders there, so, so we can just see he's just immediately not wanting to put weight on that no. leg. But what he has is wobbly legs. So the cruciate ligament, which runs through the knee here, basically the two parts of the leg is like that, the cruciate runs through the middle. Yeah and I've got movement like that. When examining Reggie's knee, it's really clear that he's torn his cruciate ligament, which is a very important ligament in the knee. But it's not just Reggie's knee that Scott's concerned about. He's a little bit on the heavy side, Stacey, isn't he? Yeah, that's all the treats. KFC. So, KFC. Egg and bacon rolls. Right, so the way you said it would suggest that you know that's not a good idea. Yeah. So we do need to sort of stop that because when you have got a dog that's bouncing around, jumping off things, possibly skidding out, and then carrying that little bit of extra weight, just a little bit, then unfortunately you can see that snap occur. So today what we need to do is to sedate him, then we'll likely move forward with surgery. If the surgery wasn't done, then what happens is that all that instability leads to a very weakened leg, a leg that he won't use. Mm. You lose a whole bunch of muscle, yeah. and when it finally does stabilise, it can stabilise in a very strange way, and it can mean that the leg is completely unusable. Sadly, if this goes untreated, in worst case scenarios, some dogs need amputation. And so today, obviously, there is a risk with yeah. the anaesthetic. Yeah. So how are you feeling about that? Bloody nervous. <laughs> yeah. I can talk to Reg. If I'm feeling sad, he knows, and they come and sit on my lap. Even though there's been times I could strangle him when he's ripped up the flat. I absolutely love that dog. I really love that dog. Say goodbye to mummy, Reg. Good boy. Mm. Be good. All right. Bye, Reg. If anything happened to him today, I'd be bloody heartbroken. It's okay, I know. She's oh, leaning into it. Come on, mummy, this way. No. Oh, oh, oh. At a camel farm outside Brisbane, Alison and fellow vet Margie are racing to save the life of a new mum after she gave birth overnight. Poor baby, I know that. As her new calf was born, Janet's uterus was dragged out of her body. She's now gone into shock and her blood pressure is critically low. So a prolapsed uterus is actually where the uterus inverts, almost like a sock turning inside out and coming outside of the body. Janet's calf looks massive and that probably explains why the labour was quite difficult. All right, let's get some IV fluids set up. This is something Alison can absolutely nail. If Janet was in the wild giving birth, both animals would definitely be dead within six hours. This is a true veterinary emergency. If we don't treat Janet right now, she will 100% die. 
And if Janet dies, then the calf has no hope. Just watch your foot. Oh my God. The most urgent need is to replace the enormous amount of fluid Janet lost during the traumatic birth. Have you ever heard the term hook a brother up? Okay. Working in a remote paddock, the team has to think outside the square. Wow, look at this setup. Margie's really impressing me. She's come up with an ingenious plan to get the bag of IV fluids above her head level so she can slowly infuse those essential fluids into Janet's system. So she gets the farm buggy out and that's just genius. I just need her head to stay in this position. You can pop that catheter in so you go that way. So out here, we've got so many more things to deal with than say if we were in the clinic. I have to improvise, I have to think something up, I have to MacGyver my way through the situation. So we'll just hook this IV up so she's got some wow, IV that's fluids. that's massive. That Get up through here. So there you can see we've got the fluids running in really quickly. We're going to need to replace at least 10 to 20 litres of fluid over the next hour or so to have any chance for her survival. With Janet sedated and life-saving fluids now flowing through her veins, Alison and Margie focus on how to get the prolapsed uterus back inside the ailing camel. So what we're looking at is the inner lining of her uterus, right? Yeah. It looks disastrous, but if we clean it up, it's not ideal, but the body will expel anything dirty. Yeah. Yeah. So that will go in. We are up against time on this one. We've only got a couple of hours to replace Janet's fluids. We've only got another few hours on top of that to actually replace the uterus. Then we've only got a couple of hours to make sure the baby gets what she needs as well. The clock is well and truly ticking. Ah, ah, is it oh. All that instability leads to a very weakened leg and it can mean that the leg is completely unusable. At Scott's Clinic in the UK, 18-month-old Reggie is about to undergo knee surgery. So Reggie's in today for what is very likely to be a cruciate ligament rupture. So that's a very large and important ligament in the knee. It controls movement uh, between the top and the bottom of the leg in the forward direction, which then means that the knee is unstable. And in the case of dogs, they then lift their leg right up. So in Reg's case, if nothing was done with his knee, a lot of the musculature of the leg, which relies on him using his legs, will wither away. And in some cases, we have complete disuse. And sadly, the leg will need to be amputated. All right, buddy. It's really important in Reggie's case that we perform x-rays to make sure that we fully understand the problem. So it is just a case of that ligament running through the knee here. So we need to go in and fix it. All right. There's many different ways to correct a cruciate ligament rupture in dogs, but the one that I'm going to perform on Reggie is called a lateral suture. It's basically placing a false suture to mimic the stresses and the strains of the joint that's taken on by the cruciate ligament before it's ruptured. All right, Reggie, I'm going in. She's not even stable enough to undergo an anaesthetic. On the Gold Coast, Alex is assessing little Luna's shocking injuries after the 12-month-old puppy was hit and then dragged by a car. I'm just giving Luna some fentanyl now, which is a very strong form of pain relief. She's got some severe injuries there. We don't really know the full extent of it, but any dog that's come into contact with a car with the injuries that she's showing at the moment has got to be in a lot of pain. We're going to bandage Luna's wounds to prevent any further contamination and also it'll make her more comfortable. Luna's devastated owners are anxiously waiting for news. I've organised for Hope and Liam to come through and see Luna. It's been a very distressing time for everyone. It's important that they have a chance to see her. Slow down, slow down, slow down. If Luna was my dog, I'd want the chance to give her a cuddle. 
just down here. Okay, you all right? Hey, Luna, look who's here. Look who's here. Oh, sweet, huh? It's okay, you see them soon, sweetheart. Now we know what some of Luna's injuries are, but I am starting to get worried about that left front leg, which she doesn't want to use, and she keeps holding it up. And if it's broken, we'll be able to see on the x-ray, but sometimes the injuries that we can't see can be worse than the ones that we can. I'm really worried about you, sweetheart. Okay. What have you done? What have you done? Rosie. We're not doing Rosie first, are we? <laughs> We're saying good morning to all the koalas. At the Australian Reptile Park koala enclosure on the New South Wales Central Coast, it's a big day for Tim and his team. Koalas are up against it. We've got habitat destruction, urban sprawl. We've then got catastrophic things like bushfires. So many koalas lost their lives, but then there's one greater thing again, and that is disease. One disease in particular can have deadly effects on the park's koala numbers. Corv B is a koala retrovirus that is just ravaging the population. Now we're going to test everyone for Corv? Everyone except for mums with joeys in the pouch. Okay. Blood samples will have to be taken from all the koalas, but the process isn't going to be easy. Hey, good morning. And this hey. is Rupert. Hey Rupert. We're going to start with probably the most sensitive koalas, the females carrying large joeys. All right, little baby. So I'll let you take him off, Tim, and well, I'll hold the toy. Little Rupert, come on, mate. A cuddle toy will keep little Rupert happy while Vet Robin takes a sample from Mum Rosie. It's okay, Rupert. It's okay, Rosie. It's okay. okay. She's being great. Robin can come in now and find the vein. Don't look. Well done, Rose. The worst case scenario today is that our population is full of Corv B positive koalas. B is the nasty one. B tends to come with death. So what we don't want to see is Corv B. That's it. pain relief before we even move you. Yeah, I think you're going to be too painful to move like that. Back on the Gold Coast, Alex urgently needs to x-ray Luna, who's been hit by a car. But with shocking injuries, the puppy is in too much pain to be moved. Luna's more painful now than when she came in. Often what happens is when they first get hit, their adrenaline's going and they're not feeling the pain so badly. She's been here for a little while now and I think it's really starting to kick in. So we want to take her through to x-ray, but I think before we even move her, we need to give her some more pain relief because she's really uncomfortable. Good girl. There she goes. Hey. There we go. That's better. Okay, let's go. Good girl. Good girl. I take the first set of x-rays off her chest. I'm looking for collapsed lungs, broken ribs. The chest actually doesn't look too bad. So there's no collapsed lung there I can see. Let's take the other side and have a look. But that's, that's not as bad as I thought actually on her chest. Next, we're going to x-ray her pelvis and her limbs. We're looking for fractures and dislocations. Okay, let's drop her the other way. Good from that angle. Luna's pelvis is intact and doesn't appear to be damaged. That's good news. Okay, let's look at this front leg. Oh, let's see what's going on in there. Okay, okay. moment of truth. Let's see. Oh, oh wow. No. Oh, that's a nasty fracture. Look oh, at no, that. She's not putting any weight on it. No, that's. Oh. Oh. We take the x ray and it's quite shocking. The leg is shattered. 
she's got a completely free fragment there as well. That's a really nasty fracture. Alison and fellow vet Margie are racing against time to save Janet, whose uterus came out of her body during childbirth. That's it. Just check that uterus is still in a good place. The case that we have here today is one of the most difficult jobs you have to do as a mixed practice veterinarian. We've literally got 20 or 30 minutes before Janet goes into complete shock. We've probably got two hours before we lose Janet entirely. Good job. Janet is extremely weak and will die unless the team can reinsert the prolapsed uterus. Without an epidural, she won't survive the extremely rare procedure. We're going to put local anaesthetic into the space around her spinal cord and Janet won't feel a thing. It also helps with contractions. We're trying to put this giant organ back in and we don't want her to push it out. This is impossible to do without an epidural. Uterine prolapse in general is bad. If you imagine a sock being pulled inside out, that's actually the inside of the uterus that we're seeing. So to manipulate that back in is going to be quite tricky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about 50 kilos. This bit is the... And this is twisted. But after disinfecting the uterus for reinsertion, a new danger threatens the already risky procedure. Oh, Bobby. So I've just found worst case scenario for Janet. She has a tear in her uterus. If this tear gets any larger, this whole process is for nothing. Janet will absolutely die. With the tear repaired, everyone is desperately hoping the stitches will hold as the arduous task of reinserting Janet's uterus begins. Okay, so I've got her uterus resting on my legs. Mm -hmm. I'm not Just wrong, this is heavy uterus. Pushing it. It's about 60 kilos of weight that we have to support and gently manipulate inside. And Margie does warn me that this is going to be a lot of physical work. This is extremely different to small animals that are on the operating table, definitely out of my comfort zone. Okay. We have so many problems to deal with today. One of the biggest is that Janet will get worried, will want to go and feed her calf, and that she'll actually stand up and damage her uterus by actually standing on the uterus. She could rupture the uterus and that is instant disaster. It's a constantly evolving ah! process. No baby, oh. no baby, no baby. Whoa. And who's gonna restrain Miss Rosie? I will. There you go. It's okay, Rupert. It's okay, Rosie. It's okay. She's being great. I'm just going to let her wander off, okay? Yep. Here you go, Rose. At the Australian Reptile Park, Tim needs to find out if any of the koalas are carrying the deadly Corv B virus. Blood samples need to be taken from all the mature koalas. It's time for Penny. And Penny also has a little joey. But in this case, we don't know whether it's a little boy or a little girl. It's the first time we will have had interaction with it. So that's really exciting. What do we have there, little boy or girl? Oh, are you ready to reveal? Yeah. Penny's Joey. <gasps> a little boy. A little boy. And that's great. If you're wondering how we can tell it's a boy so quickly, just have a look yes. at the peanuts. Little tiny peanuts. <laughs> teeny tiny. Almost done. Got it. Okay. Fantastic. Penny's done, and it's time for the little fella, our little boy, to be reunited with Mum. Hey, there's Mama. Okay. Thank you. Off you go. We've finished the mums with big joeys, and now it's time for the teenagers. And they're not going to be easy. Come on, cheeky. This is a real representation of trying to get back a text Hashtag that you regret sending. Outside Brisbane, 
Alison and Margie are still struggling to reinsert Janet's prolapsed uterus. That's it, that's okay. Stop straining, Bubba. Easy, easy, oh. easy. I'm extremely worried for Janet. There is a lot of issues going on. And at this stage, I don't even know we're gonna get the uterus back inside. That's it, it's helpful. It's not all just about getting the uterus back in perfectly and providing her with antibiotics. The problem is that once the uterus is back in, the weight of the uterus can actually rupture the middle uterine artery. If that ruptures, Janet will bleed out within 25 to 30 minutes. Oh, Get excited! No! <gasps> Oxytocin! <sighs> the reason she's straining isn't because she's feeling it. Because the calf's here. She's probably feeling everything and nothing all at one time. She knows she's given birth. She knows her calf is alive. She can't get up, she can't attend to the calf, and she doesn't know why. That's it. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. Yep, it's going. Good girl. We're definitely getting there. Finally, after almost three hours of fighting to save Janet... Yep, yep. Ah. Straight. Margie and Alison complete the life-saving operation. Oh, good work, team. So we've done well. It is such a relief when we finally finish operating on Janet. Yeah. No, no, Bobby. Alison and Margie are exhausted, but now they must turn their attention to Janet's newborn calf. Hello. Hey, baby. Hi. You are massive. A very, very big calf, Alison, and I think that's why mum might have had some struggles. Like her mum, Janet's newborn daughter is also in a race against time. We might call her Alison. <gasps> what do you think? Alison? Allie? Alison? Alison? Not so little Ali is actually really gorgeous. She's a beautiful colour, but she's actually in quite a lot of risk. That first milk that a calf takes is very, very important. If Ali hasn't had that first milk, she's at risk of passing away. Yeah. All right, Reggie, I'm going in. At his UK practice, Scott has started surgery to correct the torn ligament in Jack Russell Cross Reggie's knee. So what I'm doing here in Reggie is placing a false suture. So it's not like you replace the cruciate ligament. Uh, instead, we replace the tension that the cruciate ligament applies upon the stifle, the knee joint. Okay. So what I do is place um, a bit of suture material, like the kind of nylon that you catch a shark with um, and it basically goes behind the fibella which are in the back of the knee. We then drill a hole through the tibial crest which is uh, the bottom part of the knee. Drill a hole through there, the suture goes through there. Then the suture comes up underneath the patella ligament and then gets crimped. Basically squeezed together with a little bit of metal. Okay. Great. And that then yeah. drives the top and the bottom of the knee together and by doing so stabilizes the joint. So I would hope that this procedure will mean that Reg can make a full recovery. I'm really happy with the surgical result here. And please. I'm done. And he should bounce back. It's nice and solid. And hopefully he'll be skipping around the streets of Isworth very soon. Reggie will sleep off his anaesthetic before going home. Okay, it's all right, come on. Good boy. All right. All right, let's get you sorted, little one. Can we get you to sit down? You are massive. Alison and Margie are preparing to do blood tests on newborn camel Ali to see if she's had the crucial first drink of her mother's milk. It's incredible to think that she was only born five hours ago. For our little calf, there's a really small window 
where that all-important mother's milk is actually able to be absorbed across the stomach lining. This is a really high risk time for Janet's newborn baby. There we go. Yeah. Hello, Bubba. So what we'll do is we'll take that up to the lab. While her mum Janet recovers from her near fatal surgery, Ali's blood tests will show how much danger her young life is in. After all the work we have done on Janet, we are going to do absolutely everything we can to help this little baby fight for its life. Oh, that doesn't look very good, Margie. Do you want to take a look? OK, let's see. So we're looking at the number. The test reveals Ali's protein levels are dangerously low. She urgently needs a life-saving plasma transfusion. So the first six hours of a calf's life are some of the most important in their entire life. That mother needs to stand up and provide that first milk. It contains all the immune proteins, all the antibodies. If the calf doesn't get that colostrum in that first six to 12 hours, the calf has next to no future. Alison's got the catheter in. I'm just priming this plasma infusion. So the blood tests indicate that Ali did not get that first milk. If she doesn't get this essential plasma, she may die. As well as life-saving plasma, Alison gives her namesake milk they've just expressed from her mum, who's too weak to feed her newborn. Here we go. Let's just swap that out for her. That's it. So while mum's having a break, this is Dr. Alison feeding Alison. No, oh, I'm just being mum. <laughs> So I'm giving Ali a bottle of warm milk and it's just the best and most rewarding feeling to see her drinking and it's good to know that she's going to be okay. You had enough? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to kiss that now, it's all no. slobbery. <laughs> real sticky. Sticky, sticky. Do you want to go up there with the others? Go up with the others. It's been an extremely tough day, both physically and emotionally, but it's really rewarding to know that we've done some good today. That little Ali is going to continue to thrive and Janet's going to be a loving mother. Those legs, they're so long. All right, now she's up and raring to go. The circle of life never ceases to amaze me. Bye, Bye Ali. Ali. See you soon. On the Gold Coast, Alex has just x-rayed car accident victim Luna and is shocked at her injuries. Oh. The little dog's front leg is shattered. That's a nasty fracture. Mama, she's not putting any weight on it. No, that's... Oh. Oh. Luna's humerus, which is the bone that goes between her shoulder and her elbow, is in three pieces. It's a devastating injury, but as an emergency clinician, you need to keep moving forward. You can't get caught up on one thing. We need to do a fast scan. The purpose of a fast scan, it's a, it's a trauma scan, essentially. So what we're looking for with Luna is any free fluid in her belly. If there's fluid there, it's going to be either blood, so internal bleeding, or she could have ruptured her bladder or ruptured her gallbladder. We're not looking at organ structure here. We're just looking for fluid. And I can see there that her bladder is intact, which is good. Okay, so I'm just looking at her kidney, looking for any fluid around there at the moment. I'm not seeing any, that's good. She's still in trouble, but not as much trouble as she might have been if she'd ruptured her spleen or her liver or anything like that. I know that Luna won't go for surgery for another day or so. Her contusions need to heal and there's swelling there that needs to resolve. Let's go. You're all right, Dana. Okay, all right, let's sort your wounds out. So the plan for tonight is really going to be to clip and clean these wounds. They're heavily contaminated. There's literally bits of road in her wounds. So we need to clean as much as possible, bandage them. Some of this skin may also die off. So we need to wait and see what's gonna survive and what's gonna die. Oh girl, I think she's gonna be in hospital for quite a while. Tomorrow she'll be transferred for the repair of her fracture and then the ongoing treatment of her other injuries. She's a beautiful dog with a wonderful family who love her dearly, so we're going to do everything we can to get her home. I've got to move that leg. Oh, 
leave you to rest for the night, hey? Good girl. You're a little fighter, aren't you? You hang in there. Now it's time for the teenagers, and they're not going to be easy. At the Australian Reptile Park. Of course, they're right up in the tops. Oh. Tim is trying to test the koalas for the deadly core B virus. But the cheeky teenage koalas need a bit of gentle persuasion. No, not higher. You're meant to come down, not up. Haley's got a little pole here. What the pole does is koalas obviously don't like things like birds of prey, eagles above them. So we put the pole up just above the koala and it actually makes the koala come down so that we can grab them. Oh, now she's having a scratch. You didn't happen to hand raise this one too, did you, Haley? Oh, no. Oh, look at her. <laughs> come on, cheeky. Oops, come down. Come on. There we go. Come on. A little bit more. Well, that wasn't easy. That wasn't. No, come on. Almost. Come on. One, two, got you. Hey. Except these, these don't like to play nice. No. no. While it might be fun trying to get the koalas down, the reason behind it is deadly serious. If we identify B, we have to stop breeding those koalas. We've worked so hard over two decades to have a robust population of koalas. If it turns out that for the last two decades I've worked with this population and they're riddled with core B, it was all for nothing. Good girl. Thank you, sir. Good girl. Good girl. Now we'll well done. All done. Tim is keeping the most challenging koalas till last. And we're going to finish with the big boys and they're not going to be easy. They're the biggest sooks. Come on, big boy. Hey, Manny. Hey, Manny. Hey, we ready? We're like a well-oiled machine now. You know, koala comes down, restrain the koala. Haley grabs one part, I've got the other. And Robin just does her part so swiftly and professionally. It makes this whole process so easy for the koalas. But when Robin puts that needle near Manny, Oh, he nearly got head, me. Yeah, oh, that's your he nearly got me. He doesn't like it. He tries to take a chunk out of me. No. Oh. Still more, buddy. Oh, okay. Good job. Okay. Perfect. Good boy. Well done, buddy. Here you go. Like nothing happened. Like nothing happened. Now Tim faces a nervous wait. Whatever's in those samples, we have to deal with. We've invested so much into our koalas, and koalas generally as a species, and by invested I mean blood, sweat and tears. For us to get results back that were, let's say, all bees, that would just be catastrophic. How are you? You ready to go home? At Scott's UK practice, Reggie is ready to go home after an operation to repair his injured leg, much to the relief of his anxious owner, Stacey. I haven't been able to concentrate or been like that all day for that dog, because I love him so much. <laughs> oh God, I love that dog. Hi Stacey. Oh Reg! Oh my God, look, you're shaved. <laughs> oh man. Oh. oh, he's so happy to see you. His, his tail's going hundred to the dozen. Edge. It's always lovely to reunite a patient with a loving owner and the relationship that Stacy has with Reggie is truly special. They've got a real bond and to keep them apart was actually quite hard, but to bring them back together was beautiful. I'll be all right. I love this dog. I'll be all right. Oh, I love this dog. I will be all right. 
Well, he's, he's done you proud. He's been a very, very good boy. And now all the hard work begins. So yeah. a few weeks of strict rest and then about 12 weeks of recuperation, rehabilitation and recovery. Yeah. All right. So a exercise which is really great for recovery from a cruciate ligament rupture and then repair is hydrotherapy, swimming. So is he a dog that likes getting in the water? He really loves the water. If Scott thinks it's good for him to do hydrotherapy, then it's good for me. Even if I've got to run a bath, put him in the bath and he can paddle. So Reg is going to be going through the motions whether he likes it or not. <laughs> Say thank you, Scott. Say thank you. You're very welcome. All right. Have a good evening. Bye, see you Thanks, later. Scott. Bye, guys. Bye. At the Australian Reptile Park, where Tim tested all the koalas for a deadly virus, the results are finally in. Hit me with it. Is it good or bad? Uh, mostly good. Yeah. A couple are bad. So out of the 30-odd the that we tested, only two have been. It's been a long week. <laughs> well, I mean, that's mixed because that's not good for those two individuals. But for our population, for our population as a that's whole, fantastic. Great. That is a massive weight off the shoulders. It's mixed feelings for the two koalas that have Corv B. Nothing changes for them. They just won't breed. This is a really good result. We can implement management actions further to what we're already doing to improve our koala population. That's not where our ambitions end. I mean, there's a collective of like-minded people trying to save the koala from extinction in the wild. And every bit of useful information we have contributes a little bit more towards helping the species. Her calf will be around somewhere. Oh, hello. A month after their life-saving battle to save camels Janet and Ally, Alison and Margie are back to check on the miracle mum and daughter. See, this one's Yeah, dripping. this one's actually dripping a little bit of milk here. Yeah. It's the end of the birthing season, and while both are doing well, there have been another 12 new arrivals since Ali was born. I'm extremely excited that Margie has invited me back to witness the beginning of a new camel life. Good boy. And in the UK, it's been four weeks since Jack Russell Cross Reggie really underwent surgery on a ruptured on cruciate here. ligament. Hello. Hi, Stays. Hi, How are you? you? I'm good. How are you, you little fluffball? <laughs> Today, Scott's making a home visit to see how owner Stacey is managing with his rehabilitation. I'm very <laughs> interested to see how this is going to go. Normally, I'm in my underwear. So, <laughs> you normally do yeah. this in your underwear? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's great to see he's putting his leg down whilst he's trying to get that food, you know. Whoopsie. <laughs> it's fantastic. Look, it's maybe not exactly the way hydrotherapy is planned, where they're supposed to be swimming a lot. But this guy is moving backwards and forwards, he's getting a lot of attention, he's getting a lot of love at the same time, and he's using his legs. So hey, I can't complain. You know, so it's all different. Oh, oh! Wow. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content. And if you love Bondi Vet, then check out our Bondi Pet Marketplace at bondipet.com for a great range of Aussie pet products and services. We can't wait to see you there.